All right, so on the f number 19, the first one, it's just combining like terms, but remember to uh, remember to distribute this negative. And you don't necessarily have to show it that way, but if you think through it that way, it will help you not forget to uh, subtract everything. So make sure that you don't miss that. Here's the, these two over here are the two answers for you. In terms of multiplication, make sure that you multiply two at a time. So I would do the first two or second two, whatever you want to do, and then bring down the other one to multiply afterwards. Okay? So go ahead and check your answers with the ones in the blue box. And if you'd like to do one, let me know. Any questions on any of this? On your final test, you'll have some just operations problems like this. And let's do another quick review on. Are we good on this? Can I switch the slide? Okay. So on this one, it talks about finding all of the zeros, but I want you to just divide it, okay? Just practice dividing C, C only. So I'll give you about two minutes on that. Why do we divide polynomials? What's the primary reason? Yeah, so check for factors and then find zeros, good. So on this one, I just want you to keep in mind as you get into your test that it's not broken down necessarily by, you know, in terms of learning stuff you know that the first section is end behavior, the second section was adding, subtracting, etc. Um, this one, just and similar to the test, just divide, doesn't remind you that you can't always do synthetic division. So this one we have to do it by long division. And tell me about long division, what, what all do you remember about it? Okay, that was a lot. Good job. Why can't we do synthetic? So somebody tell them why we can't do synthetic. Because you have to, you know, you can do it by a fraction. You can divide both one by five. Two people. So we talked about when we learned synthetic division, it has to be linear, which it is, but it also has to be a lead coefficient of one. So he's proposing, could we just divide by negative three-fifths, like basically solve for the zero of that, of this binomial here. All right, we're going to, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's walk through this. So remember, if there are any terms missing, in this case we're fine, it goes cubed, squared, and then one, but... If any of those terms were missing, you would need to fill out a zero x to the power. Uh, just to keep organized and help you know how many terms your quotient should have, make sure to write, like in this case, x squared goes above the x squared term. And remember, it's always driven by the first, so the x term, you know, how many times does it go into, and then we just multiply the other one. And then I suppose last thing to remind you is to make sure you subtract all of what you wrote. And that is still an issue for some people. Okay. And then bring down your next line. How many times does 5 go into 135? Okay. Three times twenty-seven. What is that? Mm 
Okay, so again, just make sure you're subtracting everything. 131, looks like 40 maybe? No, 50. Okay, so I think we're kind of on the right track here, but plus 10 and we'll get 50x plus 30. Anytime this last row is the same, we know it's going to be a zero. So, um, but if we had been doing this as a part of a bigger picture, that would have told us that 5x plus 3 is what? Okay. It itself is a factor that we can get the zero from. And help me, help me or remind us, let's say I have this as a factor. Okay, maybe it's in a list of other factors, whatever. How do you find the zero for that factor? If you need to go graph it or you need to know something else. How do you find the zero for it? Yeah, I heard it. Can you say that louder? Yeah. Uh, I'm still helping a lot of people that get to one of those and they're like, I don't know how to get the zero or forgot. So anytime you have your list of factors, just set it equal to zero and solve. Now, sometimes, like we, I don't know if we wrote this, but we have done a ton. Like this one is going to be square rooting to find the zero. This is the step where people get stuck. Uh, looking back at the last, I think it was, yeah, unit two test. A problem like this gave a lot of people a really hard time. And I'm not sure why. Like, people wanted to square root instead of divide right here. People wanted to square root that. And here's what they did. They then wrote 3x. Is that correct? Why not? And this 3 was square rooted as well, right? So you can do it this way, but now you have this square root of 3 floating around. And you have the square root of negative 10 on the other side. And, I mean, it's, it's valid math. It just makes it harder for most students. So <clears throat> what should you do instead? Well, instead, just divide by that 3. In our notes, last unit, we wrote for solving by square rooting, we wrote get the squared thing, whatever it is, get it by itself first. So divide both sides by 3 in this case. Okay, and then square root. And let's quickly talk about square root of negative 10 thirds. What is that? How should you write it if you want full credit? Yeah, so plus or minus. That still continues to plague people. T square root of 10 thirds positive, and then i at the end. Because remember, we're going to split this 10 thirds into the square root of 10 thirds times the square root of negative 1. That still equals negative square root of negative 10 thirds, but the square root of negative 1 is i, and so now it's simplified. So there would be two zeros there, okay? How many zeros should you have? in any given polynomial? The degree, yeah. The same as the degree. So, in this one we just did, we should have three zeros. Um, if we look, this would represent one of them because we got a zero remainder. And then we would do what to this quotient to get the other two? So the 5x squared plus 27x plus 10, what would you do to it? See if it factors with star. Don't forget to pull out a GCF if there is one. And then if, if there isn't those things, then we would do what? Like what if the factoring doesn't work? Quadratic formula, yep. Does that one factor? Don't shout it out. Raise your hand when you can tell me. Everybody in the room, look at it. Does it factor? You should be there. Does it factor? I'm 
I'm talking about just this first. Yeah. It does definitely factor. Okay. So factors of 50 that add up to 27 would be 25 and 2. And then we would simplify the 25 and the 5. So. All right. Okay, so your test will look like this. On Wednesday, you'll just come in, turn in your review. So that'll be you in the basket at the beginning of class. And then we'll start the exam. I will hand you a no calculator section first. And it will be one of the solve for the zeros, right, factored form and graph. So that whole page kind of work. And then when you, it's kind of like we've done. When you turn that part in, then I'll hand you the rest of the test, which will have some key features. So be familiar, like your review, be familiar with the, um, intervals of increase, decrease, domain or range might be on there. Um, writing potential functions for a graph based on zeros and multiplicity. Oh, and end behavior, don't forget to include that. And then there will be some like our warm up where it was just operations. There will be other problems on the rest of it for finding zeros, that kind of stuff, okay? I don't think it's a super hard test, but that doesn't mean don't prepare and blow it off because remember you cannot retake this. Your grade is your grade when you leave on Wednesday. Now that kind of goes for the, the exam, but also for the course. So just be make sure that you do what you need to do to get prepared for that. I will let you use the pink notes. Is that the color? Is it pink? I don't remember. Yeah, it must be. I might see some. You can use the pink notes and a graphing calculator on the second part, not on the first. What's your question? Say that again. What percentage of the test like, goes? What percentage of the test like, goes? I think homework is like 10%. Oh. Right. Homework is 10. Yeah, how much is the test? Well, together, tests and quizzes are 85%. This specific one, um, let me do a calculation while you guys are working in all of that. Yeah. It's probably going to end up being roughly like 20 to 25%. Somewhere. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to tell you that I have no intention of giving you some surprise. This is stuff that we have done now. We have done all of it repeatedly throughout either this unit or units past. So no surprises. Just be come in, be solid, know what you need to do, study your review, and you'll be just fine. Okay? The rest of the time, I'm going to let you work on the review, ask questions about stuff you're stuck on, and if you, if you want, and we have time, we can talk about solutions at the end to give you some feedback. Okay?